And we are back. And we just finished watching 1987's The Princess Bride, rated PG with a runtime of one hour and 38 minutes. This comes to us from director Rob Reiner from a script by William Goldman from a, I think, book by William Goldman. This is the story of Wesley, played by Carrie, is it Ellis? Ellis. Ellis. Who I guess he lives on the farm with Buttercup. He's, he's the he's the the farm boy, the stable hand. Farm Where was boy. Her, where was her family. She didn't have a family for some reason. I guess her parents died or something, and it was just her on the farm with the farm hand. Farm boy, do this. Yeah, that's that was her name for him, farm boy. She didn't even use his name, and somehow she falls in love with him, and he's in love with her. Well, they were together for a long time. Yeah. They were the only people that knew each other, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess so. It was not love at first sight. Yeah, no. I guess not, no. Thankfully. It made the st- It was earned over time, yes. mommy. Yes. And then he goes off to try to make his fortune and disappears for five years. And she thinks that he's dead. Yes, because his, she's told that his ship was attacked by the Dread Pirate Roberts. Right. Who leaves no one alive. Yes. And uh, she mourned for five years. And then Prince Humperdinck. Prince Humperdinck searched the land for a... A queen. A queen, somebody to marry. For some reason, he needed to marry somebody, a commoner, who all the people loved because he had some nefarious plan. Mm -hmm. He he knew the people loved... Buttercup, Buttercup, because she was the most beautiful girl in the whole land for some. Why would he need to marry a commoner, though? Because back then, weren't they obsessed with keeping the bloodline pure? This is a fantasy. This yeah. isn't it's This isn't real. based in reality. Yeah. Okay. They weren't... Yeah. There's In, in fantasy stories, they never mention the inbreeding. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> and they sort of downplay it in the history books, too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Inbreeding's not a really good topic. <laughs> no. And then, Habsburg jaw. And then, uh, so Prince Humperdinck decides to marry Buttercup, but he has ulterior motives. And then Buttercup winds up getting kidnapped by Fezzik. Some, Fezzik's some Inig- bald guy. Inigo and and Fezzik the giant, Inigo Montoya, the and master swordsman, and... Uh, Bizzini, was The bald it? guy. Bizzini, yeah. Bizzini. The bald guy. Yeah. The bald guy, played by a wall of Sean. Mm-hmm. Inconceivable. The, the mastermind. Inconceivable. I love, love what he that. says. I love that guy. <laughs> He's like, I don't think you... I don't think that means what you think it means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go around the table and get impressions. Gee, is this your first time watching this? Um, I think I'd seen, like, most of it in the past, but I, don't, I never sat down for, like, the full um, hour, 38, 32 minutes or whatever. Yeah. What did you think now that you've watched it from start to finish? Um, I thought it was cute. It was a nice film, mm-hmm. and it wasn't, like, super slow. I liked the pacing, and the characters were all right. Buttercup kind of annoyed me. Why'd she annoy you? There's that scene where they're in the fire swamp, and then he's talking about, like, all oh, the dangers, and she's like, what about the rodents? And he's like, I don't think that's real. And then, of course, a rodent attacks him, and then she just stands there. And this attack goes on for, like, two whole minutes, and she's literally just standing there. And eventually it changes course, and it literally goes after her. And all she, could to, all she tries is weakly... Like brushing it with a, a twit, a stick, and it does absolutely nothing. And she has to rely on um, Wesley. Wes- she has to rely on Wesley to beat it up after he's like mauled by it. She was just standing there, and she saw him. And she he had a sword, and she could have walked around because that thing was focused on him. But she stood there just staring at her <laughs> beloved getting mangled. His shoulder was so bloody, and she did nothing. Well, I think back in the day, women were decorative yeah. pieces. They That's weren't really. stupid. Yeah, if is- you see your loved one getting killed, I don't care what time period you live in, if you truly love them, you would try to do well, something. This is this is interesting because this is like, this is, this is like a, a generational thing change what do you mean for g she's used to seeing girls who kick ass right that's true and 
Well, us growing up. Us growing up. The girl was always like the damsel or, or something. Or if she ever did get like a, a, a kick or a punch in, it was usually something inconsequential. She was never really saving anybody's life or anything. Right, right. Yeah, you really wouldn't see that that much. No. I mean, there was like there was like the occasional like uh, moment where the, where the girl would, would do something. Mm-hmm. What about uh, Zena or whatever? That, that came later. That, that yeah, like that, that 90s, came after right? the, the yeah. The Zena was more the nineties, uh, like, early two thousands, maybe. You okay. know what? Zena was probably like the the dawn of that. Dawn I mean, I that, guess yeah. for us it would have been like Wonder Woman, but that's sort of different because Wonder Woman's the main protagonist of the. But she also kind of not that she kowtowed to the guy, but she, uh, I don't know, I. I don't know. Well, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Wonder Woman was the main character. She was beating up like Nazis and stuff. Yeah. I guess. That's so funny. <laughs> Why are most DC things like uh, targeting Nazis? Innocent because Nazis, Nazis, are the, Nazis, Nazis, Nazis are not Nazis. innocent. Yeah. There's no and they're sympathetic the best, Nazis. Yeah, they're the best as far as bad guys go. Yeah. yeah. You can't go wrong with beating down like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you should, you. and you should absolutely vilify Nazis. They yes. don't stand for anything good. Um. I wanted to say, because we were talking about Wonder Woman beating up Nazis, one of my friends has that as their background. Oh, do they? Chrome. It's Wonder <laughs> Woman punching a Nazi, and like she's calling him a sucker or something. I see it every day, and I think it's funny. It's yeah. it's it's appropriate. But I, I mean, but back back to what I was saying, like for for G's generation, the the girl being capable mm-hmm. is it's more common. Right. Right. Uh, or you see it more. I mean, you you'll still have uh, the occasional damsel, mm-hmm. but it's it's definitely not as prevalent as it was when we were when we were young. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Gee, did you have a favorite character in this? Inigo. Inigo's great. Played Inigo's by the story is, Mandy is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and he was such a fun character. Did you have a favorite scene? We could spoil this because this movie is almost this movie is almost forty years old. Jesus, yeah. shut up! I want to <laughs> hear that. Guys are old. Yeah, yeah. I saw you saw this in the theater, right? I saw this. I the saw the sun like VHS or on t- on television. I never made. I never saw it in the theater. I saw it in the theater, but I saw like around the time that it came out, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, well, I've always liked this movie. Yeah. Did you have a favorite scene, Jing? There are two scenes. I think the funniest scene was when um, Andre the Giant and Inigo are at the gate with uh, Wesley and um, they like corn- they cornered that one guy and he's like, um, give us the key. And then the guard's like, I don't have it. And then he's like, um, Andre, rip this guy's arms off. <laughs> and then he immediately surrenders the key. That was really funny. But I, I think the most laughing. enjoyable scene was when um, Anigo uh, killed the six fingered guy. Yeah, I, F that guy. That was that was so good <laughs> because I'm so I get so angry. Like I'll read books or watch movies, and the person will be like, "But killing you won't bring my loved one back." I don't care. Yeah, kill him. I really don't kill. care. Like they thought it was okay to kill your loved one, so they're fair game. I don't give a crap about like, oh, it's not right. It make me as bad as you. Okay, then yeah. I'm as bad as you because I don't care. No, just, no mercy. Just kill them already. It's mm-hmm. so annoying. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Olive G, what do you think of this film? Is I this your first good. time? Is this your first time watching it? <clears throat> no. Yeah, you've seen it before. Yeah, I've seen like bits and pieces of it. Okay, and and what did you think? I thought it was okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you? Did you have a favorite character? Do you like Buttercup? God no. No. Uh, Nobody honestly, likes Buttercup. But Buttercup was like useless. You know, she wasn't what helpful like whatsoever. You know, like, Buttercup. You know, she, and also like Buttercup. Like what? What the hell kind of name is that? You know, like <laughs> yeah. You sound like a horse woman. Why? Why would she be named a horse? Why would she be named Buttercup? <laughs> Her parents were hippies or something. I don't yeah. know. Buttercup? <laughs> hippies. What the hell, man? Buttercup is the name of to a horse, honest, not a woman. Both of them, Wesley and Buttercup, annoyed me. There was that one scene where um, and he goes telling uh, Wesley after he wakes up, like, oh, um, there's 60 dudes there and we need to beat them down. And then he's talking all like, well, if you gave me a month, I would be able to. <laughs> <laughs> 
that scene. <laughs> He's According to like, my calculations. Exactly. So when he was Professor Fring from The Simpsons. That's, that's exactly what he sounded like. He was about to be like, oh, actually... Because why was he like, um, we need a wheelbarrow, and then he's like, or wagon or something, and he's like, oh, uh, and he was like, oh, we have that, and he's just like, well, why didn't you tell me that was in our inventory or something? Yeah. Um, shut up. <laughs> Dang, <thing>. girl. <laughs> These kids don't have much tolerance. Yeah. Them, yeah. It was, they even though they annoyed me, it wasn't like I wanted them to like get brutally murdered. Like I was really mad at Buttercup, but it was okay. Yeah. Were you happy that they get together at the end? Yeah, that was satisfying. Okay. Too yeah, stupid. I mean, satisfying. People belong with each other. <laughs> I was. I mean, I would rather her be with Wesley than with uh, the Humper Humper Far Quaff or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Humper Dink. What'd you think? I've always loved this movie. I th- yeah. I, even, Why? Even when I was young and all I cared about was exploding heads. and. What, and now, so, so what made you love this movie? It's just a sweet story. It is just a sweet story. I mean, I there's a, probably a reason why I didn't see it in the theater. Okay. Probably because it's uh, The Princess Bride. The title alone is going to s- repel most uh, teenage boys. Mm-hmm. You weren't a teenage boy in 87, are you? Yeah, it was. 14. Oh, all right. Yeah, never mind. Wow, you're good with the math, yeah, girl. Yeah, look at that. Dang. Even I couldn't figure that out. I know. I was like, wait a minute, what? It was easy because seven is uh, greater than three. So you could just add them. I don't even know what that. Don't explain <laughs> it to me. Don't explain it to me. But yeah, it, I doubt when they were like coming up with the marketing campaign, they were just like, yeah, this is teenage boys going to love this commando and the princess bride. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I saw that in the theater too. But uh yeah, when I when I actually did watch it, it's it's great. It's and plus, you know, it, it had Andre the Giant in it. Everybody teenage boys love Andre the Giant. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you being a wrestling fan. It had, as you well. know, the sword fighting and and uh very funny scenes like the one G pointed out or or just I always found it hilarious when Inigo finally confronts Rugen in that mm-hmm. hallway mm-hmm. and he says his line and Rugen just, just holds up the sword for a second and then suddenly he just turns and <laughs> runs. They do that in Gumball. <laughs> yes. Gumball does that. So I'm sure Gumball's friend. like lifted so many scenes. Oh yeah, there's yeah, completely. Yeah. Um yeah, if you if you haven't watched Amazing World of Gumball, is absolutely get on that. One of if not the greatest cartoons ever, ever made. Ugh. Gumball aside, mm-hmm. there's just so many little funny bits in it and everybody's playing their part really well and uh it's just super sweet yeah Yeah. what about uh the mechanism of telling the story so the story is basically the the, yes a a child is homesick and his mother comes in and she's like well your grandpa's here he's coming to visit with you and then the grandpa comes in and he says oh i have a gift for you and it's a book and at first the child is like what the hell is this but the grandfather starts yeah, reading it to him. and my TV back in the day. Yes, books were t- my TV back in the day. And it's kind of like, it's sweet because you have this mechanism to sort of propel the story. And it's, in its own way, it's very sweet. Because at the end, the young man turns to the grandfather and he's like, well, maybe you can come back tomorrow and read it to me again. Which mm-hmm. was really sweet because in the beginning, he was you see, all, like hesitant. Right. He, he didn't was, want to. wasn't he, excited about it. It's called The Princess Bride. Exactly. Yeah. Repelled by it for the same reasons. You know, but I, not I just only pointed that, out. but it's like it's same, like when the mother was telling him that it, his grandpa was coming, he kind of was like not interested. He was like, oh, can't you tell him I'm sick? Like he didn't want to spend any time. I think he'd rather play his little video games. It was, yeah, it's because he hated him pitching his. Didn't want to get his cheeks pinched. Pinched, right? Well, that's the, that's the, why is why is cheek pinching a thing with old yeah. people? Yeah. I don't know. They love my it. Aunt, my aunt Florence used to just dig in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I used to hate that too when they like grab you and it's yeah. like it hurts. But uh, yeah, and then like at over time, like he's like grossed out by the kissing, and and then at the end he's just like, all right, I'll read read that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean this is such a cute it's definitely a family film and it's yeah. definitely sweet there's nothing objectionable here i cannot i'm not even gonna look at the imdb page i cannot imagine that there's I'm, I'm sure they'll mention the blood 
but that's blood. about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. never mind. I mean, it's not like, it's not geysers or rivers of blood or. But there's like stabbing. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's killing and apparently. And a rodent attack. A and a rodent. giant rodent attack. <laughs> yeah. And the, the shrieking eels. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, there is there is killing. So I'm yeah. sure I'm sure on but I mean, I'm sure it's, it's I'm sure now screen. it would be PG thirteen or something like that. Really? Yeah, because every I mean, come on, everybody's got such a stick up there. Also, Inigo says, "You son of a." Oh. Yeah. That's a good line, though. Yeah. So this and this was just PG. So I don't know if it, I think PG is like now PG is like there could be nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'll go around the table and get impression or numbers. But before we do that, I want to dedicate this episode of the podcast to our lovely Aunt Erica, who is the reason that we're all here today. If it wasn't for Aunt Erica, I wouldn't know you. And if I didn't know you, I wouldn't have these kids. And if I didn't have these kids, I wouldn't be sitting here living my best life. If you didn't have kids, then you'd probably be with like some weirdo. Um. Why does it have to be some weirdo? Dang. Because, I've, I've, because I've, weirdos I've seen attract. The, yeah, I've, 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 I've seen <laughs> the people you dated before me. Yeah, the kids, the kids not far off. <laughs> Shut your ass. <laughs> Weird goblins. Anyway, <laughs> trolls. This is <laughs> easy. You were dating trolls, mom. No. Anyway. Again, this episode of the podcast is dedicated to the lovely and wonderful and amazing Aunt Erica on her birthday. We love you and we'll see you soon. I'm going to go around the table and get numbers. Olive G, 1 to 10. 8. 8. No, G- wait, 9. 9. Gigi, 1 to 10. I was also going to give it a 9. Hmm. 9. 9. Yes, 9 all around. Absolutely. Unanimous. Four nines. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, we checked it out on Disney Plus, right? Disney Plus. But I think it's also to buy rent on Prime. This is an absolute classic. It still holds up. The writing is still strong. The performances are all fantastic. The story moves at a really good pace. It's kind of interesting because it's not a long movie, an hour and 38 minutes, but it goes by very quickly and you will be hella, hella, hella entertained. Yeah, all throughout. There's, all throughout. There's, there's, there's no, no slow, bits. slow bits. Yeah. This is the type of movie, as an ex-film student, this is the type of movie they should be teaching in film school. Yeah. Yeah, because this really hits all the buttons. I mean, I think, and don't get me wrong, this is a great film, but if we're talking about romance adventure, I think obviously the paramount picture there would be The Mummy, because that movie <clears throat> is also something that just that yeah that's that's a nice swashbuckling tale yeah with a side of romance with a side of romance yeah good and good, just co- good comedy to relieve amazing amazing yeah. writing on that the set pieces the costuming everything this is not far off from that but yeah i think that uh i mean well th- this is filmed in a way that's more can like i guess conducive of like a storybook fantasy Yes, definitely. It's, it's definitely, it feels like a storybook finish. Just the, the lighting, the sets, the the costuming, the way everybody's acting. It really feels like it's a children's storybook. Yeah. And in all the best possible ways. Ways, yes, yes. Well, I think it's it's definitely based on a book. I don't know if it's like a children's book or a novel. I've, I, I have no idea. I've never read it. Um, but the gentleman who wrote the screenplay is the book writer. So, um, yeah. And I mean, and I, and again, I liked that mechanism of just telling the story, a story kind of within a story. Yeah. Cause it, it just hits on like two different levels. You yeah. Know, you got like the love story in the story and then the grandpa and, and, then the, and the grandpa and, and the, the kid grandson. and at the very end he says as you wish which yeah. means which means i, I love, love you. you yeah yeah so i thought that was also cute too yeah just really sharp really lovely storytelling holds up it's funny this is a movie that is again almost 40 years old but it's still very fresh and very alive and it's been I think recently, I think they did a thing on the internet where like different people were acting out scenes in this movie. So again, a testament to the popularity of and the enduring love that people have for this particular story. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you see it when people talk about this film. 
because I've I've never heard anyone say anything bad about this film. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, it's just it's one of those films. It's the yeah, everybody. Yeah, loves it regardless of you know age. Um, <laughs> any final thoughts? Anybody? Anybody? No. I don't no. Think so. All right. All. Okay, again, uh, Princess Bride from 1987, one hour, 38 minutes. It's currently streaming on Disney+. Plus. And with that, we will bid you all a... Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.